Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Monster Tamer News, the segment on this channel where we go over this week's happenings in the world of monster taming. Now, this week we have a lot of interesting information, including some release dates, some new monsters, uh, various patch updates, and an exclusive look at some never-before-seen Monster Crown content. So, with all that being said, as usual, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Alright, so we're going to kick things off with some very exciting Monster Sanctuary news, that being the official release date of the game's full access launch. The game will be released on December 8th for Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and of course Steam. The footage you're seeing on screen right now is specifically from the Nintendo Switch trailer. Interesting piece of Kindred Fates news this week, and that's that the newsletter that was supposed to release this past Saturday has moved to later today. The reasoning behind this is because it's supposedly quite a large newsletter and needed more time to be fleshed out. Now, call me a conspiracy theorists, but I'm wondering if this newsletter is going to have something directly linked to the alpha release date, and perhaps it was delayed to avoid being overshadowed by the Crown Tundra, which released earlier this week. I don't know, just a thought. Now, speaking of which, Pokemon's Crown Tundra update is now officially live, and allegedly the main story portion takes about four hours to complete. I have yet to do so on my own right now, however, I have compiled a video showcasing and analyzing all of the new legendaries if that's something that interests you. Now, speaking of new content, Zack over at Thylacine Studios has announced that on November 5th, will be receiving a large content update for Serulum Ultimate, and on November 12th the game will be entering its beta phase. Subsequently, Alpha Keys will no longer be available for purchase as of this Wednesday. Now of course, we can't talk about new content without pointing out the elephant in the room. Now that's right, Jason the developer of Monster Crown, and someone who I'd even dare call a friend of mine, has graciously bestowed us with two new monsters to showcase. On a side note, I honestly love it when developers do stuff like this, so if any devs ever want me to do like a reveal for them or something, Please feel free to ask. Anyway, we got a crossbreed for Hanny, a currently unavailable yet known monster. This crossbreed occurs when Hanny is bred with an unstable type and it closely resembles what a typical baby Hanny would look like. Instead of it becoming what Hanny usually is upon growing up, it remains in this form and only grows larger over time rather than maturing. This is likely due to its unstable nature. Now the second monster that Jason sent is a brand new mystery monster that's never before been seen. Now what we know about it via Jason's description is that these creatures are very fast and call the Frost Province home. Now I have a particularly bad track record with guessing what these monsters are. At a first glance, I thought maybe this fish-like monster would be used to traverse the waters. Fish-like monster, fish-like monster, fish-like monster. Fish-like monster would be used to traverse the waters. Uh, but to me, it looks like some sort of bug or something like that. So we don't have a name quite yet, so at least if it turns out not to be a bug, it won't be as epic of a fail as when I thought Crudle Dew was a fish. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think this thing is. It intrigues me quite a bit and it looks pretty cool. We've got some pretty big cassette beast news, which always makes me very happy, and that being two new cassette beasts revealed being Elphys and Artillerex. Elphys is the first ever ice type revealed and it apparently crafts these wooden masks in an attempt to hide their true emotions and are particularly nimble and spry in battle. They're capable of summoning blasts of snow and ice with the snap of their fingers. Artillerex, and come on, isn't that just the best goddamn monster name you ever heard? Artillerex. It's described as being a mighty fire type holding a pit of molten metal within its body. It can then shoot these out using the turret on its belly. It's said to be one of the most powerful and large cassette beasts on the island. And the news reveal also notes that this monster was indeed showcased during the cassette beast reveal trailer, which I specifically remember seeing this dude and being like, damn son, this guy's looking pretty sexy. They also showcase a fusion between the two revealed monsters and it's goddamn scary. Now, I just wanted to take the time to remind everyone that Chain Monsters is currently active in its Kickstarter campaign. The the original goal was to hit 10,000 euros, but that's been absolutely slaughtered, with it currently sitting at 91,000 euros at the time of recording this video. At 100,000, it'll reach its final stretch goal, which is something called the Uleva Park, or Eluvia Park, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which will be a special area that only opens up on the weekends and has various dynamic challenges each week. Now, unfortunately for me, I always work weekends, so rip, but it'll be quite exciting to see what happens when we do hit that final stretch goal. Will they add more? How far up will those stretch goals go? I'm really excited. That being said, the game still has 24 days left on its Kickstarter, and assuming all goes well, we'll have even more to look forward to in the future. Now, that being said, I did get a hold of the developer of Chain Monsters, and he's agreed to come on 
the Monster Taming and Chill podcast for this week, so definitely subscribe to get notified when that comes out. In Adore news, the most recent devlog revealed even more monsters, with the game reaching around 30 unique monsters at this point, which is no small feat given how unique each monster is in the way that Adore plays. The first is Momba, another creature with a ride mechanic, and its special ability is called Entangled, which essentially forces enemies to be locked in place, though they can still execute attacks. I believe it's like a snare from League of Legends. The second monster is Aquin, who gets access to a combination AoE, as well as a very powerful water gush attack that can push enemies away. And the third is Giran, which is very interesting in that it has an attack that can shoot an orb, and then you can completely control said orb. It also gets a water bubble defense ability that allows it to block incoming projectile attacks. Leo, the developer of Necromancer's Gift, has shared with us the past week's progression, and he's got some interesting information. First of all, as you can see, the bestiary has been updated to include almost every monster that'll be present within the alpha, so that's definitely exciting. Expect a video in the future on that. And we also get more insight into dual held items, which Leo basically specifies that certain items will specifically work with each other. So, for example, you could have a pizza crust and then a topping, and they'll do something special together that perhaps they otherwise wouldn't do alone. That was my interpretation of the post anyway. There's also going to be a special item called a frozen pizza crust which allows you to use the first form of a monster or I guess the second form and use its final form stacks for the sake of using the monsters you love rather than evolving into something that you don't. When I was a kid I remember I, for, I don't know why but for some reason when I was a kid I didn't like Typhlosion so I always kept my Quilava as a Quilava. It was just my thing. I really liked the middle form. It was my favorite and you know this would have been really useful back then. <laughs> No hate to Typhlosion though, he's looking pretty epic. We also get a confirmation of single use items, though these were to be expected. The alpha is planned for release on Halloween. The patch quest beta has recently updated to version 2.3, which includes some new dungeons in both the volcano and fossil zones, as well as some changes to how patch pins, or they were previously referred to as wildlife samples, are stored and executed. For example, instead of recycling excess pins, they're now sent to your storage and can be used at a later time. The Moncraft developer just tweeted out an old image that showcases some of the game's monsters. I figured to show it off here in the news segment despite it being an older tweet because I know a lot of people who have become more privy to the game as of recent probably haven't seen this. I'm very impressed with the pixel art of this game, I have to say. The dev also showcased various type icons so we get an idea of which types will be present within the game, though keep in mind it is subject to change. Of the bunch, I'd say the most notable are Blood, Void, Sound, and Rubber which don't really have Pokemon counterparts, and I guess you could say also light, as fairies are more of a creature type rather than an attribute. Over to Re-Legend news, we have a new Magnus, which is this nightmare-fueled pink blob named Slickat. This blob hails from the tundra, and according to its description, is more dangerous than it seems, though it looks pretty goddamn dangerous to me. We also get a look at November's roadmap, and it looks like this month they'll be focusing on optimization-focused updates, various debugging and network fixes, and some game localization. Not really the most flashy of news for this month, but definitely very integral parts of any game. Now, we did get a new Mythin from the upcoming title Mythin Island, this time being Spored, this little mushroom guy. He's quite cute, and I'm interested to see what he evolves into. We got another new Abami this week, that being Alabrodi, a lightning type. These multicolor vibrant animals are said to guide people into the afterlife. We also get to see some new items, the first being the underdog orb, which boosts your attacking stats each time you take a status condition, the stone armor, which reduces all damage taken by 15% at the cost of one stage speed every time the user attacks, and the chrysoline glass, which doubles the holder's chance at getting a critical hit. Furthermore, we see an item called the Cucumber Sword, which boosts plant and slashing type moves by 15%, and also gets a stack plus a bonus to make a 33% boost should the attack meet both criteria. As well as the green pom-poms, which boosts the attack of an Abami while the holder is on the sidelines. These can all stack together. There are also four new bib items that boost the Abami's various stats depending on the specific bib by 25% should it be a non-fully evolved Abami. We also got a new Drugimon named Grin Reefa. It's said to appear to chronic pot smokers who have just passed away. It provides them with a few... <clears throat> it, <a pro> <laughs> it provides them with a few more tokes before they reach the other side. A Shin Megami Tensei Nendroid is currently up for pre-order and it features a Black Frost Demon that apparently is a pretty chill guy until he remembers he's a demon. Pre-orders will be up until December 17th, but the actual figure won't be released until April. Mr. Buddy, the lead behind Buddymon, an upcoming Pokemon-inspired monster taming game, recently showcased a buddy named Shrotuni in our Discord server. I actually really like this one as he kind of reminds me of Toad from Mario. 
The Ninth Dawn 3 Discord server recently announced that they're working on a wiki for the game. If anyone's willing to help with something like that, please check out their Discord as wikis are honestly an amazing way to both help out players and even content creators such as myself. It helps out immensely having an up-to-date and accurate wiki for various games, which allows people like me to make more frequent videos, which in turn helps various games get more exposure, and it just ends up benefiting everyone overall. This is one of the problems I have with covering so many games, is I don't get the time to go in depth with each game as I'd like to, to be able to provide each and every wiki with all of my findings. If I could do it all, I honestly would. <laughs> overall, this week was a pretty solid one. I'm extremely curious as to what's going on with that Kindred Fates newsletter, and I'm super pumped for the Necromancer's Gift Alpha. I'm sure a big thing on people's mind as well is the Monster Sanctuary on consoles, which I'm going to stick to Steam, perhaps PS4 as well, just to get that Platinum trophy, but I know a lot of you guys are excited for Switch. That being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd. Uh, you can check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. I have various perks there. And uh, definitely check out our subscriber Discord. There's lots of fun stuff going on in there. That's free, so come join the subscriber Discord. Anyway, until next time, peace.